Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 132. I must again mention that there are some confessors who seem to be true spiritual fathers, but only as long as things go well. When the soul finds itself in greater need, they become perplexed and either cannot or will not understand the soul. They try to get rid of the person as soon as possible. But if the soul is humble, it will always profit in some little way or other. God himself will sometimes cast a shaft of light into the depths of the soul because of its humility and faith. The confessor will sometimes say something he had never intended to say, without even realizing it himself. Oh, let the soul believe that such words are the words of the Lord himself, though indeed we ought to believe that every word spoken in the confessional is God's. What I have referred to above is something that comes directly from God, and the soul perceives that the priest is not master of himself, that he is saying things that he would rather not say. This is how God rewards faith. I have experienced this many times myself. A certain very learned and respected priest, probably Father Vilkovsky, the sister's confessor at Potsk, to whom I sometimes happened to go to confession, was always severe and opposed to these matters which I brought to him. But on one occasion he replied to me, Bear in mind, sister, that if God is asking this of you, you should not oppose him. God sometimes wants to be praised in just this way. Be at peace. What God has started, he will finish. But I say this to you, faithfulness to God and humility, and once again humility. Bear well in mind what I have told you today. I was delighted, and I thought that perhaps this priest had understood me, but it so turned out that I had never went to confession to him again. Once, one of the other older mothers, probably Mother Jane, summoned me, and it was as if fiery bolts from the blue were coming down upon my head, so much that I could not even discover what it was all about. But after a while I understood that it was about a matter over which I had no control whatsoever. She said to me, Get it out of your head, sister, that the Lord Jesus might be communing in such an intimate way with such a miserable bundle of imperfections as you. Bear in mind that it is only with holy souls that the Lord Jesus communes in this way. I acknowledged that she was right, because I am indeed a wretched person, but still I trust in God's mercy. When I met the Lord, I humbled myself and said, Jesus, it seems that you do not associate intimately with such wretched people as I. But at, be at peace, my daughter. It is precisely through such misery that I want to show the power of my mercy. I understood that this mother had merely wanted to subject me to a salutary humiliation. O oh my Jesus, you have tested me so many times in this short life of mine. I have come to understand so many things, and even such that now amaze me. Oh, how good it is to abandon oneself totally to God and to give him full freedom to act in one's soul. St. Faustina writes here about the confessors, who seem to be good spiritual fathers, until they need to make a discernment about something beyond the ordinary confession. Then they want to run. But she shares how God uses the priest as, the, as his instrument, and the priest sometimes ends up saying something that he had never intended to say. And I can attest to the fact that this happens, not only in the confessional, but also during homilies. God knows what he's doing, even and especially when we don't. St. Faustina also shares the story of a superior who wanted to give her a salutary humiliation to make sure that she wouldn't grow proud because of all the graces that she was receiving. St. Bernadette uh, of Lourdes, the visionary, uh, she became a nun after the apparitions and uh, she grew holy because her superior was constantly humiliating her to keep her from growing proud. The superior was very well educated, and she probably had some envy 
that God had chosen an uneducated peasant girl like Bernadette for such special graces, and that God had not chosen her, the superior. But God knows what he's doing. I had to laugh when St. Faustina said that to God that she had learned from her superior that God would never choose such a wretched person for such special graces, and I expected God to reassure her, but rather, he affirms it, and he says, I chose you precisely because of your misery. Uh, God chooses the souls that he wants for his special graces, and then he lifts us up. He chooses the little ones to show that it is he who is acting and not us. But St. Faustina discovers the importance of cooperating with God's grace and giving Jesus room to work in our heart, and we should do the same. <laughs>